Good morning, church. So glad that you can come and join us and worship the Lord together. Wherever that you are, we ask you to please stand as we prepare our hearts and prepare to engage with God and to encounter God this morning. Wherever that you are, we believe God is there with you. And as we declare that He is risen, as we declare that our God is ruling and reigning above all things, we can give Him thanks and we can give Him praise. Wherever you are, just begin to lift your hands and just begin to worship Him. Begin to adore our King, our Lord, our Savior. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, Lord, we thank you, God, for your great love for us. Oh, in you we have the victory, O oh Lord, because you saved us and you redeemed us, O oh Lord. Oh, Rama, Rama, Shana, Rama, Riana, Rama, Rama, Sekirie. Thank you for your love, oh Lord. We thank you, God. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, this morning we thank you. We thank you, Lord, because God, today, Lord, we celebrate. We celebrate, oh Lord, for God, that you have overcome the grave, that you have saved us and redeemed us by the power of the blood of the Lamb. Lord, through the victory that we have in you, O oh God, we can stand assured, O oh Father, Lord, of the victory that we will have, O oh God, in this situation. Lord, in the victory that we will have, O oh God, in our lives, O oh Father, when we put our hope and our trust in you, Lord. And so this morning, we give you all praise and we give you all glory because you deserve it all. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, join me as we worship the Lord together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we praise you. We thank you, Lord. As we declare that praise is rising in this place. Hallelujah. Sing it together. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. Turns to you. Hope is stirring. Eyes are yearning for you. We long for you. Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. Yes, Lord, in your presence, all our fears. I washed away, washed away, Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises, Hosanna, Hosanna, come every way among us. Welcome you here, Lord Jesus. So you hear the sound. Hear the sound of hearts returning to you. We turn to you. Yes, in your kingdom, in your kingdom, broken lives are made new. Because when we see, because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us. Worthy of all our praise. 
just begin to give him praise. Oh, begin to worship. Begin to worship the King of Kings. Begin to worship the risen one who is seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Welcome to Church News. We are glad that you can join us. As you can see, we're working from home. And so we hope that you stay home too, especially during these circuit breaking measures. And let's believe for God to come through and help us and help Singapore pull through this difficult time. We want to remind you that it is important to give. It is important to give unto the Lord. And so with the pay now service that we have, search for us on your mobile banking app or scan the QR code and give there. And if you're giving your pledges, do please uh, put in your MFP and your pledge numbers into the transaction reference field. If you, can, if you want to mail us a check or you want to do a bank transfer to our accounts, you can just head over to elamchurch.org.sg where we will have all the relevant information for you. Or from any inquiries, you can drop us an email at general.office at elamchurch.org.sg. Don't forget, we still meet online every Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Saturday for our Teochew service at 10.30 and Sundays for our English, our Mandarin and our Myanmar services. Right, head on over to the URLs, the respective URLs, uh, chinese.elimchurch.org.sg, myanmar.elimchurch.org.sg and english.elimchurch.org.sg. We encourage you, go through these links and if you're watching on your PC, interact with, the, with our very friendly hosts that will be there to greet you and let's treat it like church because we can't meet physically let's meet online in that virtual space and we have hosts readily available to chat with you to bring out your prayer requests to pray pray with you and for you and so we urge you do take, may take advantage of these avenues also at any time if you feel that you want to re-watch the service you can just head over to our youtube channel on elim church elim church sg search for us elim church singapore and you'll find all our streams there now our family life message this week is to build and strengthen your marriage by speaking the truth in love speaking the truth in love ephesians chapter 4 verse 15 tells us instead speaking the truth in love we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is christ it is important especially now that we are in our homes together you know to to speak truth to speak love to one another right very often it is during these times that we can get on each other's nerves especially if we are working in close proximity with one another and so build and strengthen your marriage this week by speaking the truth in love at times we may step on each other's toes but when we have love in the environment when we have love in the mix everything seems better Right now, it is my privilege to turn over the rest of the service to our speaker this morning. Put your hands together. Welcome, Reverend Derek Sim. Hi, everyone. 
On behalf of Elim Church Singapore, I want to greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and for this very special day, and that is the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, for the past few months, we have been hearing the word Corona, Corona, COVID, COVID, you know, you know and the Lord uh, spoke to me and he said, I want them to hear about my name. Because the name Corona, COVID, just brings fear and death. But my name brings life. So this morning, on, sun, on this special day, on the resurrection day of our Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to hear the mighty and a powerful name of Jesus being lifted up. So during my stay in the Philippines, the Filipinos use a greeting word, which I find it very fascinating and I, and I came to adopt it. And the greeting word is Mabuhay. And they, when they see each other, they will say Mabuhay. Or if you see in those uh, advertisements, they say Mabuhay Pilipinas. In fact, it is also the signature welcome greeting in their country's flag carrier. And in English, it is translated live or be alive. So when they greet each other, they are saying be alive or alive. So this morning, I want to greet you. Be alive, Singapore. Be alive, church. Amen. Praise God. Why? Because Jesus Christ is not dead. He is risen and alive forevermore. Hallelujah. This morning, the title of my message is Alive Abundantly. Alive Abundantly. And the text is taken from John chapter 10, verse 10. The text says, The thief comes only to kill, to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The thief here refers to Satan, and his purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what we are seeing right now. With the many deaths that has been reported, thousands are dead, and many are infected by this virus, but Jesus said, I came, I come, that they may have life and his purpose is that we may have life and have it it abundantly every life on this planet is precious to jesus every living soul on this earth is very precious to the lord jesus christ and the moment you were born it is a gift from god and Everything that we do in this life is to make our life happy, is, is to, set, uh, to make our life satisfying and meaningful. Everything, scientists are developing drugs to make us live healthier and longer. And, but we all know the world has suffered countless wars and many natural disasters where thousands were killed. In Psalms 103, verses 15 to 16 tells us, As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like flower of the field. For the wind passes over it and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. The psalmist tells us that our life is very fragile. It is here one moment, the next it's gone and never to be seen again. In fact, my sister just reminded me that last week was my, on the 7th of April, not last week, yeah, last week, on the 7th of April was my mother's death anniversary and it's one year already. And praise God, I have this opportunity to share with you on the resurrection day that my mother 
is with the Lord Jesus Christ. He's enjoying herself, worshipping in heaven because of the love of Jesus Christ, because she has received the salvation of Jesus Christ. I would like to use the acronym ALIVE, ALIVE, to share with you what it means to live an abundant life in this earth. The first letter, A, acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God. Acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God. That's where the abundant life comes from. He is the Savior of the world. In fact, He is the only hope that we have in this world. In John 3, 16 tells us, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I believe one of the characteristics of living abundantly is to know that we are loved. To give love, to receive love, is a very foundation and survival in this world. And God has given that love to you and me. In John 14, 6, Jesus answered. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. You know, in the philosophy of life, you only need to know three things, actually. And it's not complicated. And Jesus has given us the word. There is the three things, the way, the truth, and the life. And when, if you know these three things, you are living life. But many people do not know their way. Many people do not know the truth. And that is why their life is lost. And when Jesus spoke these words, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It is not complicated. The second letter is L. L says, Jesus is the living word. Everything you want to know about Jesus, about living an abundant life, is in the Bible. Why? Because Jesus' words give us life. When you begin to read his word, his promises, what he says about you and me, it ignites the very spirit within us bringing life into our very soul. It says in John chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God, and He was in the beginning with God. Everything that we need to know about life is through Jesus Christ. That is why He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The third letter is I. I is to internalize his word. The next step when we read the Bible is to internalize his word. What do I mean by that? To internalize his word is when, example, a friend brings you to a restaurant and he tells you this dish is really delicious this dish really tastes very nice its flavor its texture its its taste you must i tell you it is very delicious but you cannot be convinced until you take a spoon and you scoop that dish and you put it in your mouth and you begin to taste it. And as you begin to taste it, you allow the flavor of that dish begin to uh, uh, assimilate inside your senses. You begin to taste the flavor, you begin to taste the texture, and that's where you, be, you begin to swallow it. All right, And that's what it means to internalize 
the word of God in your life. In Psalms chapter 34 verse 8 tells us, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. It says, taste and see that the Lord is good. I challenge you that you, as you come, as you hear this message on this Resurrection Sunday, taste and see that the Lord is good. An illustration we can see in the Bible on internalizing the word of God in our lives. When Peter was running towards the tomb, when he was told by Mary that the body of Jesus was not there, when Peter arrived at the tomb, he immediately entered the tomb. And what did he see? Peter saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded by itself, separate from the linen. When we read this account, it's like, yeah, Peter just go in and, and see the, the body was not there. But the word saw is actually the Greek word blepo which means not just to see, but to think, to ponder, and process. Peter is probably thinking like this. If Jesus had revived and gotten up, the cloth would be all torn or unraveled. But if the friends had taken the body why in the world would they dishonor the body by taking it away naked? They would have kept it in the grave clothes. But if the enemies were doing it, why in the world would they have taken off the clothes and put them nicely and neatly on the tomb stone? And Peter was really thinking heart. Friends, that is what we should do when we internalize his word. We not only see what we begin to process, we begin to internalize, and we begin to think of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The next letter is V. V refers to victory in Jesus. When Jesus rose from the dead, he broke all laws. He broke all the religious and philosophical teaching and understanding about death. Now, what victories does the resurrection of Jesus accomplish for you and me? The first victory is victory over Satan. In James chapter 4 verse 7 tells us, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Satan has no hold on each and every one of us anymore. Of course, if you allow him to. The second victory is victory over sin. In Romans chapter 4 verse 8, chapter 4 verse 7 to 8, sorry, it says, Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord will never count against them. Hallelujah. God has forgiven us. Amen. And the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ gave us the victory over sin. And it says, blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven. And when you are forgiven, you are blessed. You are blessed. That's, 
that's wonderful that our sins are forgiven. The third victory is victory over death. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 54, 55, chapter 15, sorry, chapter 15, verse 54 to 55, tells us, when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting. To many people, death ends all things on earth. Our future, our goals, our dreams. Once we die, everything ends. But I have good news for you. Jesus revealed a secret to all of us. Found in John chapter 11, verse 25. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. These words were uttered by Jesus when he resurrected Lazarus. So in this letter V, we see Jesus has conquered the sting of death. Amen. The last letter from this acronym ALIVE is E. And E tells us of eternity. You know, when you read the Bible, there are many incidences where God confronts people who are seriously mistaken or wayward. And God confronts them, not angrily or by rebuking them, but he does that gently by probing questions. Example, in the Garden of Eden, God asked Adam and Eve, where are you? How come you know you are shameful? To Jonah, who was running away from God, God asked him, are you right to be angry? You know, in counselors, counselors know that it is not enough to tell people how to live. Asking questions help the person to recognize their errors, to discover and embrace truth from their hearts. I have a very important question for you on this Resurrection Sunday. And that question is, where will you spend eternity? Again, I ask you, where will you spend eternity? Just now we read that scripture verse in Corinthians from mortal to immortality. It means that when we die, our mortal flesh here on this earth will disappear. It goes back to its original state, dust. Either we are being buried or we are being cremated. But I have good news for you. It is not the end. There is life after death. When God created us, he created us with a spirit of immortality. We will not die, but will live forever. But the question is, where will you spend eternity? In John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3, Jesus tells us, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also will be where I am. What a wonderful promise 
in this verse that Jesus has given to us. There is a count in the Bible with regards to the resurrection of Jesus. When Mary met Jesus at the garden tomb, she was asked, Why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Interestingly, in this account at the garden tomb, when Mary looked into the tomb, she saw two angels. This is the first time that she was being asked this question. When she went to the tomb, she went and entered into the tomb, she saw two angels in white, and they asked her, Woman, why are you crying? And her reply was, They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this moment, as she turned around, Jesus was standing behind her. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. Thinking that he was a gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. You know, in this conversation, in this account, we actually learn that Mary and the other ladies that went to the tomb, they were not looking for a resurrected Christ, but a dead Christ. But Jesus did not rebuke her. And when Jesus called her name, Mary, she immediately recognized that it was truly Jesus the Christ and that he is truly alive. Jesus has risen and he is alive. And because he is alive, we too can live our lives for him abundantly. At this moment, I want you to close your eyes. As everybody's eyes is closed, please don't go to your kitchen to get a, grab a glass of water or go to the toilet. This is very important. Just give me a few moments. As you close your eyes, Jesus is asking you this question. Will you spend eternity with me? Why are you afraid? Believe in God and also in me. I repeat again, Jesus is asking you this question as your eyes are closed. Will you spend eternity with me? Why are you afraid? Believe in God and also in me. I'm going to pray for you at this moment. You can call it a sinner's prayer, but I want you to really, like as we have mentioned, internalize what you have heard in his word. As you begin to think, and as you begin to ponder, as you begin to process, let the Holy Spirit speak to you. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I confess that I am a sinner. Lord, I want to give my life to you. And I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life right now. Lord, Today is being the Resurrection Sunday. Lord, that you have given me life. Forgive me for wasting my life. But today when I hear your word, Lord, I want to give my life to you so that you can lead and guide me. Lord, I thank you and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have prayed this prayer, and you want to connect with us, you can go to our website, www.ilmchurch.org.sg, and we will be very happy to connect with you. Amen.
Thank you. God bless you for watching and have a wonderful week.